My name is Seek Donnelly. I've been a nerd my entire life. I've been working since I was 15 years old, everything from retail to movie production to comic books. I've been in and out of hospitals more times than I care to count, but I've been lucky enough to make some amazing friends and meet some amazing people. And now I want to share some of those experiences with you. Welcome to my life. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, it's been a long time. I know I haven't really posted anything on, uh, you know, on YouTube here for a while now. I have had a tough month of February, obviously, uh, but uh, I'm bouncing back. I'm doing okay. I'm gonna be basically doing stretches and things for my back uh, probably for the rest of my life, but not, you know, like every day. Now the doctor said, uh, but uh, overall I'm doing good. I, I'm back at work. Uh, my health is back. As you guys saw, probably this past week I was in the hospital. Uh, I had a nasty bug. I couldn't hold any food down. And for about five days, I was just throwing up and, and worse, everything that was inside of me. And uh, I got really pale. My blood pressure dropped drastically and they were worried about, you know, my heart and other things. Um, so, you know, I was eating applesauce. I was basically doing this thing called the brat meals, which is uh, bananas, rice, um, uh, applesauce, and toast. And so I've been doing, I was trying, you know, doing like little slivers of each to just try to keep food in. Even water, I would drink water and throw it up immediately. While I was, you know, down and out, <laughs> I was looking at kind of my life and, and kind of what led me here with, uh, you know, all the stuff I've had, surgery back in Thanksgiving, and then back pains and, you know, kidney scares and all these things that have been going on, and how hard I push myself, um, you know, pumping out content and everything. So I got to be smart about things moving forward. So we're mainly going to do three shows overall, like Venom Vlog is not going anywhere. That's going to still keep coming. Um, and then on my gaming channel, we're going to just throw up gaming, you know, like when I Twitch stream, we'll throw up those over on the gaming channel. And then I'll also be doing like a Halo show over there. And that'll probably just be once a week or once every two weeks and it's just going to be a casual thing nothing major you know not like I'm not like the Venom vlog it's not gonna be super in-depth but then here I wanted to do one other show we did a poll on Twitter we asked I asked you guys to vote what you would think and I'm sorry I didn't put that on here you know here on YouTube I know a lot of people on here on YouTube would have liked to have been a part of that but this was just like a quick thing I wanted to do just to see just general interest and what other show I should do because I only could do one show I can't I can't do four or five shows like I was planning I was burning myself out I didn't even record a lot of stuff yet and I was already burning myself out on just how hard I was working behind the scenes on doing five different shows a show you know a different show a day uh, every day of the week and it was just it burned me out it added to my you know unhealthiness and everything uh, so I you know had to pull it back and I said if I could do one other show what would it be and a lot of you guys voted for a personal vlog and then I got you know confused because I was like oh what should I do for a personal vlog like do I just talk about you know comics or my health or you know whatever um, I'm hoping to stay healthy from here on forward so I was like, well, I don't know how much health stuff I'll have to update for a while. Um, but you never know with me. So uh, that'll be what this show is. Uh, today I figured I would just start off with an adventure. Uh, so right now I'm outside of Walmart. Uh, I was in there looking for a figure. I didn't record anything. And I was like, you know what? I didn't find a figure anyway. But there is something I do want to get today. I want to get the latest issue of Spawn. Um, and I went to uh, Legacy Comics last night. And they didn't have a copy. Uh, so I figured I would go to House of Secrets, which is right down the street. And, uh, and pick it up there. Um, and then after that, I'm going to go home, walk my dog. And then maybe we'll talk about about some spawn stuff so this is going to be filmed in increments and I'll edit it all together hopefully it'll make sense I'm gonna this is a learning thing for me I'm recording on my new phone I got the new Samsung uh, phone not the new uh, 10 I got the 9 uh, but uh, but it's new to me because I had a phone for like three years and uh, it was very limited in what it could do so hopefully this footage comes out really well I hope you guys like what we do moving forward on this show and uh, I'm definitely down for suggestions for more personal vlog adventures so if you want to comment down below let me know what you'd like to see me do around LA or at home or what you want me to talk about. We can talk about Spawn stuff, DC stuff. I figured a personal vlog would be nice because we could talk about a little bit of everything that I love. Uh, so let me know down below in the comments. And until then, you know, while you're doing that, I'm going to go off and I'm going to try to find a copy of Spawn number 294. <laughs> All right, 
right, I just got out of House of Secrets, and as you saw, they had the latest issue spawn. They had some back issues too. Turns out I was missing an issue. I don't know how I was uh, missing this, uh, but I actually found it, and uh, this was part, uh, part like four, yeah, 279 of spawn. So I was actually, you know, gloating that I have every issue, and here I, I freaking missed one. So luckily they had it in there, so I was able to pick this up too. Um, so yeah, I love that store. It's nearby. It's near, you know, not too far from where I live, but it's also like right next to this church that my roommate goes to. So it's so funny going in there and buying spawn comics and then coming out and staring right at this church that's next to it, uh, which is pretty, pretty awesome for me. I don't know. I find the humor in that. Uh, but this book is great. We're going to talk more about spawn um, since we're not going to be doing specifically a spawn show we will talk a lot about spawn probably on my personal vlog uh so that way i can squeeze in talking about the character because i'm really loving what todd mcfarlane has been doing uh, and the different artists he's had, Simon uh, Kudransky, I think, Jason Sean Alexander, uh, who's drawn some of the issues, uh, is the artist on this issue, actually. So, um, yeah, and then obviously these amazing covers I love. Uh, so this is going to be stuff you'll you'll hear me talk about, but, uh, you know, I figured this would be a fun first adventure. I was just looking for one issue, ended up finding the other issue that I was missing. Uh, so now my Spawn collection is once again complete, although I think I am missing an issue of Medieval Spawn versus Witchblade that just came out. I think I'm missing issue two, so I'm going to have to... Uh, uh, go back and double check my collection. I saw it in there, but I didn't want to buy it in case I was wrong about the number I was missing. So I will go home, check my collection, and come back and then complete that uh, little mini series as well. I figured for the drive home, I would maybe answer a question that I get asked uh, yeah, every once in a while, not a ton, because I think most of you who watch this show or watch Venom Vlog and stuff, you know that you know I'm a Spawn fan. You kind of know why I'm a Spawn fan, but some people do ask me why. Like, are you a Spawn fan just because of out of nostalgia? Um, and uh, you know, they ask like questions like that. And I think a lot of people think nostalgia is, can strictly just be a negative thing. And I see definitely a benefit in nostalgia. I don't always like when nostalgia is um, weaponized to be like a, um, you know, like to, to sell you something, not completely, not if it's like the sole purpose of it, but if it's a part of it, it makes sense. Cause you know, like everything, you can't control what people are nostalgic about. So there's an element there that is kind of a wild card. Um, so I would say, do I like Spawn out of nostalgia? Uh, sure, it reminds me of better times of like when I was like, reading stuff that was outside typical comic book, uh, you know, structured stuff like, uh, you know, like Batman and, and Spider-Man and X-Men and stuff. Like when I started to deviate, it was around the time of Spawn, The Crow, um, like the reprintings of, not the original Caliber Press, I don't think, printings of them, but maybe like when it went over to Kitchen Sink, like in the early 90s, right around the time the movie came out. And even Spawn, I was a late bloomer too. I think I got in around like issue 12 or 13. Um, or maybe even later than that, it might even have been closer to issue 20. Uh, by the time I got into Spawn, it was because my one of my best friends in middle school, we were both like, uh, I think in eighth grade, and he was saying like, uh, you know, talking about this book all the time. And uh, finally, you know, he, he sold me on it. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. So he let me borrow issue one, his copy, uh, and I read it and loved it and was like, all right, I got to check more of this out. So, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of grew, that's where my love for Spawn grew, and I went back and actually went through back issues to buy the first, you know, 20-something whatever issues of the book, and I really liked it because he was different, like, uh, you know, like different than what I had seen, but also familiar, too, because at that time, I really liked, you know, action stars, I was a young guy, you know, going through that phase where I was watching, you know, like Van Damme movies and Dolph Lundgren movies, like the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie, I think was only a couple years old at this point, and uh, I kind of dug that movie a little bit. Um, I liked Brandon Lee. I was a big fan of his and The Crow and when it came out, I think, in 1994. And uh, I just started to deviate from the typical heroes and started getting into these these guys that lived in the gray areas more. And uh, I just found that really cool. And I really liked Bishop from the X-Men. So uh, when I saw Spawn and he didn't have his costume on, he was Al Simmons. He was big black guy with a, you know, gun, military guy. Uh, I grew up in military family. I, you know, I had an uncle in the Navy. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force. My grandpa was in the Army. Uh, so you know, I was surrounded by that kind of life, not like big guns, you know, you know, gun toting guy kind of life, obviously, but just, I understood the, the regiment that comes with a military lifestyle, what kind of life that, you know, has my grandpa seeing his interactions with my grandma and stuff. And that, you know, kind of, I kind of put that on Al Simmons, like, you know, Oh, you know, he probably the way he, you know, he loves Wanda reminded me of my grandpa was like, you know, very devoted to my, my grandma, you know, he very much loved her. Uh, and they had nine kids together, my grandparents. Um, 
or thir it would have been 13, but they, uh, my grandma had four miscarriages, I believe. So yeah, we come from a big family and uh, Al Simmons, the exact opposite. Al Simmons was unable to have kids and uh, he was a Republican soldier of fortune. He was a, a, you know, black Republican guy who just believed in what he was doing, fought for his country, uh, thought he was doing the right things. Um, as you've seen in the movie, the way they translate, I love Michael Jai White. I thought he was a great cast for Spawn. I ended up becoming a big fan of his because of Spawn and watching other movies that he's made. I really love Black Dynamite. That's like definitely one of my favorite movies of his. Um, but I really like seeing him a lot. He was on like Arrow. I watched him play a couple. Uh, I played a character on Arrow, I believe. So. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, uh, when I think of Spawn, I think of all these, like, good memories and uh, my gateway into different things like, uh, you know, different actors and uh, different, uh, you know, styles of movies and things, st styles of storytelling. And so, uh, so yeah, that's kind of what Spawn is to me. I mean, he's, he's this departure, you know, and uh, I like that. I, I think, you know, when you have a... a basically a, a regimen in your life or you have like a, a you know a schedule um it's good to uh deviate it's good to depart from it from time to time and uh and that's what spawn represents to me is, is uh and like the crow represents to me is this departure from the norm um it's these guys like todd mcfarlane who broke away from you know selling a lot of copies of spider-man comics for marvel and jim lee who sold a lot of copies of x-men for marvel and they were really talented young guys who were making a big name for themselves and making a lot of money for these companies and just were like hey look this is a business and as much as we love drawing these characters and writing these characters and, and telling stories with these very beloved characters uh we also are trying to think long term we want to make a we want to treat this like a business and make money off this and then these guys did and they went and sold millions of copies of spawn and young blood and you know all these other books that these guys at image made and uh and they became rich like they became really rich uh making comic books and they kind of became like rock stars in a way and uh and that also was different that was a departure from the norm at the time and so uh again departure uh you know uh, breaking away from the mold i think that's important uh, to have every now and again and so because spawn and the crow and these things represent that for me it's why i always have a soft spot in my heart for them uh because they are just different they're di they're different characters than you're used to seeing it's a different narrative it's a different world spawn is dealing with you know i grew up catholic so spawn dealt with questions that i had when uh, you know when i was younger um and uh, and being catholic i was i was kind of a weird catholic kid too like i would ha i built a tent in my room one time and uh had the bible i read the bible cover to cover um and uh, i would sit in my room and just read the bible in this little tent and uh, i was so captivated by the stories it wasn't like i was uber religious so much it was just that i found it very interesting the the stories that were told in the bible um i thought there was a lot of uh knowledge there as far as like you know just basic like how to treat people kind of things uh you know um how uh how omnipotent beings might act from time to time uh you know a glimpse at you know how people translate messages from god and things and i just found that to be really interesting and so that there was a comic book out there coming out every month that was dealing with that was really cool to me i thought that was just the neatest thing was to see um you know basically this this guy al simmons who was so in love with this woman and wanted to just have a normal life with her even though he was very dedicated and he had a very abnormal job of always just being called and whisked away and having to assassinate people and kill people for his country and for what he believed in to keep his you know his love safe um and for, you know his friends safe and everything and uh i to see that and then him die on this mission he was double crossed by the people you know because it's government it's you know black op stuff you know he knows too much or whatever he knew too much and they uh they take him out and uh what happens in the blink of an eye is that he goes to hell and he's face to face with not the devil, but a devil called Malbolgia. And Malbolgia is like this giant demon creature uh, who is able to make a deal. And he says, look, I will give you this power, this symbiote, uh, this, you know, this, uh, this costume, essentially, uh, that is alive. Um, 
and it will be painful and I'm gonna put it on you and you have to go to earth and you're basically gonna just do things that I tell you to do or you're gonna be you're gonna hear whispers and lean into doing things that uh, I need you to do and uh, and this is for a greater cause there is a war between heaven and hell and uh, and everyone's a part of it whether they know it or not and you are gonna be my biggest peace on the chessboard. Um, you're going to be my most powerful. I'm going to have you strike. I'm the king and you're my queen. You're going to move in every direction I want you to move in and you're going to take out whoever I want you to take out. And I just thought that was so interesting of a concept uh, for a comic book, uh, let alone just a story in general, that I had to be a part of it. And so that's why I read Spawn. Um, it... Uh, it, it reminds me, like I said, of all these of great times in my life where I questioned uh, great, you know, bigger powers, where I, where I departed from the norm, uh, where I was growing as a young man, and that's what that book represents to me, and that's why I read it. All right, and I'm back home, and I have all my Spawn stuff out. I figured we would go through some of this stuff. Uh, this is just the things I've been buying from Spawn for the, you know, past maybe like year, year and a half or so, probably even longer. Um, you know, obviously I can't go through my whole entire collection uh, that would take short boxes on short boxes, like pulling them out and going through each issue and stuff. But I'll at least show you some of the recent stuff, stuff that, you know, I got signed last year and then all the way leading up till now. Uh, last year, I think it was in March, we had uh, WonderCon and I went there for the Venom vlog and I, you know, got a couple people like Marat Michaels and like a guy dressed as Spider-Man from Homecoming uh, to do little intros for the show. Uh, for those wondering, I won't be able to go this year just due to health reasons. I'm told to keep a low profile for a while, don't stress out my back, and then obviously the other health stuff going on. So uh, I'm pretty much just going to work and just doing my normal routine. Um, but uh, I will try to build myself back up and get ready for you know Halo at the Halo Outpost later this year. Um, so, uh, and speaking of Halo, Todd McFarlane used to make Halo toys, which were really awesome. I collected a lot of those. Uh, but Todd McFarlane here, I have Spawn Resurrection, uh, signed by John Boy Mayer. He was the artist of this series, uh, and it was written by Paul Jenkins, and I think story-wise, Todd McFarlane. Basically, and I love Paul Jenkins' work. That's what really I was, like, so excited to jump back into Spawn, because I'd been buying it, but I had started, a, a, you know, slowly stopped reading it, and it was just because of time. It wasn't because I lost interest. I actually liked the Jim Downing story. There was a guy like uh, uh, there was a point in the book where Al Simmons uh, goes into the alley uh, where he's, you know, normally hangs out and like, uh, you know, he's like the king of Rat City or whatever. And he goes in there and he rips his head off and it sends like a beacon between hell, earth and heaven. And he kind of splits things open and changes the rules. And it kind of exposes some of this behind the scenes stuff that was going on in this war between heaven and hell. And so what happened was this guy who has been in a coma since issue one of Spawn, uh, Jim Downing, and this is issue one here, or uh, a new version of it. This is the director's cut. I had Todd McFarlane sign it. He signed it in gold pen when I got to meet him, which was really awesome at the Venom, uh, you know, uh, block party for the release of the Blu-ray and DVD. And uh, in issue like two or three, Venom or in Venom, uh, Spawn goes to uh, his wife's house, Wanda, ex-wife's house. Uh, he goes to Wanda to try to communicate with her, but when he shows up, he his body, the symbiote around his body naturally turns into this, like, white guy, um, and he shows up, and he's like, hey, you know, he's trying to, like, you know, say who he is, and he's, like, getting flustered, and he passes out, I believe, and so that white guy he turned into, turns out, it was someone connected to this whole big story, and that's what Jim Downing is, or who Jim Downing is, so when Al Simmons kills himself, and uh, goes into the void in the endless universe, and drifts between the realms uh, to go on his next adventure, Jim Downing wakes up from his coma and you find out he, hey, he's the same dude that showed up on Wanda's doorstep way back in issues like two and three. Uh, so I thought that was really cool how that kind of pulled back in and Jim Downing for a while was Spawn and he was going around trying to figure out uh, what Al Simmons had done and he was kind of caught in between this war again with heaven and hell and these other elements and Violator was coming and like talking to Jim Downing, trying to get answers from him. It was a really cool storyline. So when that wrapped up, I would kind of missed out on reading it, so I went back, reread it, so that I could get caught up for this, which was Spawn Resurrection, and this was bringing it back to Al Simmons, and, uh, and so that's where we are right now. So Al Simmons is back, and he has now peeked behind the curtain. He kind of sees what really is going on with the war, although his memories and everything are kind of, you know, a jumble because he was in, like, another realm. Uh, he was talking to God <laughs> at one point. Uh, I think there's an entire issue in here where he's just speaking to God. The artwork by John Boy Mayer is awesome. I love this stuff. Looks really, really good. Uh, kind of an anime-ish, cartoonish, uh, kind of more urban style to it, but it, it works for the book. It looks really great. 
And so basically Al Simmons has found out that the real devil, uh, Satan, has uh, now is intervening in this whole thing. And Satan has Wanda. He has her soul, basically. So Al needs to get to her. And he, he knows he needs uh, Cyan, his, you know, uh, Wanda's daughter with Terry Fitzgerald. So after Spawn died uh, as a human, he was gone for five years. He came back, found out that his life was a mess. Uh, his wife moved on, uh, kind of. Uh, she married Terry, his best friend. And together they had the kid that her and Al never could have because Al was, you know, unable to have children uh, in the comic book, so in the storyline. So uh, Wanda had a little girl named Cyan. And so Cyan is now kind of a part of all this, uh, you know, this whole adventure and this big thing that's happening. And Satan is now a, a big part of this as well. So, uh, so Spawn Resurrection was kind Kind of the return of that there was another trade paperback called um the satan wars uh that i have in single issue but i don't have the trade for uh, but i do have the trade for the one after that called hell on earth and this is a big trade i think it's only like 17.99 and there's like 12 comics or something like that in here uh this is a really good deal uh image and mcfarland like he really tries to get his book out there at a really reasonable price i mean 2.99 per issue there's so few comics nowadays that are 2.99 spawn consistently is 2.99 so i love that uh and then i found this i've never actually read this book before but i'm going to go through it it's called spawn book of the dead and uh, it's actually written by Steve Niles, who did like 30 Days a Night. Um, and it's got artwork by Ashley Wood in here. And it just looked beautiful. And basically, it's like an encyclopedia of the universe of Spawn. Uh, and it's like a journal entry uh, from, you know, someone talking about the different Spawns throughout the universe. There's like the Gunslinger Spawn. There's Al Simmons there. Um, yeah, this is great. I love this stuff. I love Ashley Wood's artwork. So I had to pick that up. I got it for the cover price, which was a... Uh, uh, $14.99 when this first came out, but I found it at uh, Legacy Comics. So I got that a, like a couple months ago, right before Christmas. Um, so then, yeah, we're at Spawn, uh, Spawn Kills Everyone, Part 2. I had the first uh, one, uh, Series 1. I think it was just like a one-shot comic, but this one is going to be a four-issue series. I actually like that cover a lot. Uh, this book's okay. I mean, it's kind of goofy, juvenile, fart kind of humor. Um, so, it, I mean, it's all right. I'm, it's not my cup of tea. But because I'm a Spawn fan, I was like, yeah, it's four issues. I'll pick them up to support, you know, Todd and, and what he does. And I got to give him credit for trying something different. You know, it's a, it's a different take on Spawn, that's for sure. Uh, but it's not one that's, like, trenched in continuity. It's, it's more of a goofy, you know, fun book probably for him to do. Um, and then we go into this, which is uh, the Dark Horror Saga. And this is issues 276 here, um, and then 277. I like this cover because it reminds me of the old 90s. Like in the, There was a point in the mid-90s where the covers got really abstract and weird looking. So I kind of like that cover for that reason. Um, then we have 278, and then 279. That's a great cover, actually. That's a really great cover. Um, 279, 280, and uh, 281. And I think that's all of the Dark Horror Saga. And uh, and then, yeah, we have 282, another great cover. I love this one. Uh, and then we get into the, the newer covers. These are the ones, I, I can't think of the artist's name right off the top of my head. Maybe I'll, hopefully I can find it and pop it up on screen or let me know in the comments down below. Um, but this these uh, images are amazing. And I'm sorry for the reflection with the light and stuff. Uh, but these images, I can't do them justice. They just, they look so good. And uh, I don't know if any camera can capture just how amazing they look. It's better to see them in person. Uh, but we got 283, 284, uh, 285. Did like this cool half cover. There was one where it was blank on this side and you could draw your own face. I, I tried to find one of those and I couldn't. So I'll have to track one of those down at some point. Uh, this one, 286, had like eight covers. I think it was because in 186, that was the first appearance of Jim Downing. Uh, and then like started his story. So it's 100 issues after that. Uh, and so they kind of tie some of the story threads and give nods to that. But I think that's why they did eight covers, even though it's the, pretty much the same image, just changed the coloring on a, a lot of them. But Todd does that, and he doesn't charge stores extra, as far as I know, for the different covers. I think it's just order what you want kind of deal. So again, no gimmicks or, or anything like that. He's just like, hey, I'm trying to put out a quality book at a quality price, and I'm hoping people buy it. And if you're not reading Spawn, I suggest you do, because we're coming up to issue 300, and uh, I'm, I can't wait to see what happens with all this, because they're bringing back all these old villains like Freak and Cygor um, and Violator and like all these characters. Uh, Violator we've seen a little bit, but a lot of these other ones, like Cygor and stuff, uh, we haven't seen any of them since like really early days of Spawn. So I can't, I can't wait to see what this is building to. Spawn's putting together like an army of villains uh, you know, that he used to fight and stuff. And it's getting really, really good. Uh, so we have 287 here. And then 288 
is just the black and white of that cover. I don't know if that was just because, you know, scheduling and timing. I know Todd does a lot of this stuff himself. He's a very busy guy. So I don't know if it was just like, hey, we don't have a cover. Let's just use the, the inks from the you know previous one. Sometimes that happens or maybe, maybe I bought a variant or, I, you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's why those co covers are the same covers. Just one's just the original art and the other one saw the colored version. Um, 289, again, beautiful stuff. Uh, 290. And if you don't follow Todd on Instagram or Facebook, I recommend that you do. I don't have Facebook, but I follow him on Instagram and he posts videos every day of like his work routine, uh, him drawing or him editing something or him giving notes on something. I mean, it's re the guy works all the time and he shares that like process with people. It's just he, if you want to know about comics or how to like run a business or anything, you get little slivers of that in every one of his videos. So I'd recommend that you do it. I'll put links down below to Todd's stuff. Um, 292, we got there. Uh, 293, and then of course the issue that came out today, which I have not read yet, is 294, uh, which has the Violator on the cover. So yeah, I mean, this is just, I love this character. I even made like this little collage-y thing here with all this artwork from earlier issues. Uh, Greg Capullo artwork, Todd McFarlane artwork, uh, a lot of good stuff. Sam and Twitch up there, and then it's even two-sided. I got the three journalists over here. I love this. This is a running gag since issue one. It's basically a CNN lady uh, and then like an E Entertainment guy and then like, you know, like a more extreme, uh, like, uh, you know, right wing guy. So it's like it's got all three personalities, like someone leaning left, someone who's about the like the entertainment side, like they'll be like, oh, I like his cape. Like, who's this superhero with a cape? Capes are so cool. You know, like the fashion of capes, is, you know, it's like kind of has that approach. And then you have someone on the right. So that that you know, narration has always been in the Spawn comics of just everyone's perspective, everyone's translation of Spawn and the events that are happening to him. Uh, so you always get a, a, you know, a street level person's view uh, kind of uh, of the character in the books. And I always thought that kept the book kind of interested in, uh, interesting to me because every time it went really crazy with the heaven and hell stuff you all that you would always like turn the page and then you would read these three journalists talking uh, you know talking heads on tv uh describing certain things that are happening either in the world that that somehow relate to spawn um or just uh, don't relate to spawn sometimes uh, but they always give you that perspective of the world spawn and habits and i think that's very important to keep those and i'm glad you know, even still to this day, McFarlane puts those characters uh, in his book and he's updated their hairstyles and their clothes and everything like that and what even what networks they work for now. So, yeah, it's pretty neat. I, I dig it. Um, I dig this character and I wanted to share since we kind of cut away with the Spawn show. I was like, you know, if we're going to do personal vlogs, let's start with Spawn. Let's start with a hunting for the latest issue. So I, you know, am caught up. I bought the issue that I missed, uh, you know, 279. Uh, so now I'm caught up. I have my whole collection. I am missing issue two of Medieval Spawn versus Witchblade. So I'll pick that up next time I go to House of Secrets. Um, and next time I go to a comic store, I'll film what I do there and we'll talk about a different character or a different event or something else going on in my life in the next episode. Uh, but for this one, let me know what you thought of this. Let me know what you thought of the format. I'm still going to change up some things. I'm going to try to shoot more B-roll, go around the city, do more things outside if I can. Uh, definitely helps with my health to go do more things outdoors and be a little bit more active, as the doctor said. So we will be doing more of that moving forward with this show. But for today, I just want to do something simple and record a bunch of stuff and share my love of a character I really love deeply with you guys. And I can't stress enough. If you are into comics right now and you're not reading Spawn, there's only six issues left to issue 300. I would say jump in now. If you have any questions, you can always ask me. You can ask other Spawn fans, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. I'll catch you up the best I can so that we're all ready for issue 300 when it comes out in just a few months. Thank you so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Hit the notification bell so you know when new episodes go up so you don't miss a single thing. Thanks so much for watching my show. I'll see you in the future. Peace.